Hey gorgeous tribe, I'm going to explain today how leaky gut affects your health, why it's important, what you can do about it, what kind of symptoms it causes. I have had loads of discussions recently with friends and with clients about this mystery of leaky gut and it's, to me, it's second nature, it's one of the things that I deal with with a lot of different people on a daily basis because it's so fundamental to people's health issues. But for you, it sounds weird. Like, why does your gut leak? Where does it leak to? Why would you care? So we're gonna throw out some knowledge bubbles today just to go through what kind of things are a symptom of leaky gut. So what kind of things would you notice problems that you're trying to solve and maybe think, hmm, maybe my gut is having some inflammation, it's having some stress, and that's why I've got these other symptoms. And they're not just digestive symptoms. So let's jump right in. We're gonna look at some symptoms. We're gonna look at what happens in your gut, and then we're gonna look at some causes. And we're gonna run through quickly a few things that you can do about it. But really it's understanding the connection of how fundamental the integrity of the membrane that lines your gut is to everything in your health. Symptoms. Okay. These symptoms can be indicative of other things as well. But as I said, you could have all kinds of things going on. You see up there, it's autoimmune. You could have autoimmune um, rheumatoid arthritis. You could have Hashimoto's disease that attacks your thyroid. You could have lupus. You could have any number of autoimmune conditions. And what has been found in the functional medicine world and in studies is that all or most, if not all, you can never say 100%, have an intestinal permeability problem. So if autoimmune condition is, a, is an issue for you, you've been diagnosed with it or you suspect you might have one, you need to have a look at the integrity of your gut because it's so fundamental to the optimal functioning of your immune system that if your gut is permeable and it's not healthy, you're not getting the absorption of your nutrients, you're getting a lot of inflammation and you're very likely to have food intolerances. So if you have, and these are just a few that I've picked out of the many symptoms that intestinal permeability can cause, fatigue, digestive issues, autoimmune conditions and cognitive and memory disorders. So that idea of having the, you know, the foggy brain, not being able to concentrate so well, not being able to remember where you're going, not being able to, it, it's very subtle. It's a symptom that I hear a lot in my clinic. That idea that your memory's not too good, you're not as sharp, you're not as, you can't come up with the ideas and the solutions and the word that you're looking for as quickly as you know that you should be able to. So if any of those symptoms seem relevant to you, you might have all of them, which is very likely. Let's have a look at what's actually happening, what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a leaky gut. Okay, very simply, the lining of your gut are cells. When you eat food, the food gets digested into single molecules of that so if it's a protein, it's a single molecule of protein. If it's a carbohydrate, it's a single molecule of carbohydrate. And your body has to digest it down that small so that the gut can go, oh, look, there's a single molecule of food. I know what that is. I'll let it through the cell wall and it can go into the bloodstream and it can go to the rest of the cells in the body and you feed it then you have your nutrients, then you can use them for other reactions in the body, for energy, for building blocks of your muscle and bone and hair and tissue, anything like that. When you have a leaky gut, when your gut wall is permeable, the junctions between the cells in the lining of your gut get baggy, they get wider, um, 
it's it's a very simple way of putting a very complicated process so it's not so simple that it's just a space um, when your body's choosing whether or not something goes through there's chemicals and enzymes involved that carry it across but for the purposes of understanding let's just say that the sentries on duty and the decisions of your gut whether to let something through or not aren't optimal this is what we want only single molecules getting through but this is what we get so maybe your digestion isn't quite as hot Okay, so if you're very stressed, you don't produce a lot of hydrochloric acid, you don't break down the food as well, and you get larger molecules of food coming and trying to get through the membrane. Inflammation contributes to this formation of the gap. When the gap's there, the molecule of food, which is a, a chain, one, more than one, goes into the blood. But... The body has no program for that. The body knows to recognize single molecules of food. It goes, oh, right, that's a molecule of carbohydrate. I'm gonna take it over here. I'm gonna do this with it. And it filters through the liver and it knows what it is. It recognizes it. When a larger molecule of food goes through, it just sets up an immune response. It thinks it's a virus or a, par or a parasite or a, an infection and so it, it says, look, there's that thing. Okay, so we'll stick a flag on it. And every time we see that, we're going to attack it because we don't want foreign invaders in the blood. That's their whole job. The immune system is there to police our bloodstream and police our system so that foreign invaders don't come in and damage our bodies. The problem with this is that it's inappropriate so the level of food that we eat, so if you're eating wheat, breakfast, lunch and dinner, which is very common, you could have toast for breakfast or cereal for breakfast, a sandwich for lunch and pasta for dinner. You're having wheat three times a day, every day, seven days a week. The body keeps seeing this invader and no matter how big an immune response it mounts, it keeps coming in. They're not winning, so they have to mount a bigger response and a bigger response, and it confuses the immune system and it throws its function out. So then it's not doing its normal job and it's ramped up to silly degrees trying to deal with whatever's coming into it. You get more inflammation because of all this immune response, you get a more permeable gut, you get more food intolerances, your digestive ability goes down because you're under more stress. And the cycle continues until over time you develop a disease. At first, when this is happening, you have signs in your body that all is not well. Fatigue, digestive issues, cognitive and memory. Over time, you develop a disease. By the time you're, you have an autoimmune cis, uh, disease triggered, you're in a disease state. Um, that comes with a long-term issues, but it can also create cancer issues and heart issues and diabetic issues. So all the time this process is going on inside your body, you are slowly, slowly, slowly compromising your health from the inside. And it's relatively straightforward to fix once you identify what you need to do. So, the causes which lead to it, I've mentioned a few already. I stand over this way. Stress, alcohol, parasites, yeast and bacteria, medications, food reactions and excess sugar. So you go through a really stressful period in your life. The thing that tends to happen is you have less time, you have less sleep, you drink more, have more coffee, have more sweet food, comfort food, um, and set yourself up for a period of time where you're creating more inflammation and a more likely environment that you're going to damage the lining of your gut. That's the easy way to start reversing leaky gut. 
or intestinal permeability. Once you understand that these kind of factors affect you in such a profound way, the place that you start is reducing your stress, reducing your alcohol, looking at medications that you're on. So um, non steroidal anti-inflammatories, you maybe don't need to take as many. Um, obviously heart medication, uh, medication for ulcerative colitis or anything like that, tamoxifen if you've had breast cancer, you might need to stay on those medications. There's not a lot you can do about them, but the, the other ones, particularly um, doses of antibiotics uh, on a not needed basis. So if you every time get a cold, go to the doctor, get some antibiotics, which they're very happy to prescribe um, readily, that's going to affect your immunity and compromise your gut. Uh, food reactions. So if you have a sensitivity to gluten, so I have a sensitivity to gluten and I didn't know for years and I kept eating it and eating it and eating it and it's not the one that gives me the biggest reactions but it's certainly been a big factor in compromising my health and in leading to me developing Hashimoto's an autoimmune condition. Excess sugar is such a big talked about issue right now. Um, it's a great place to start when you're looking at your diet. You start with your simple, so your sweet sugars, your cane sugars and your refined sugars. And you look at your fruit intake, you look at your um, <laughs> cakes and biscuits, obviously. <laughs> um, and then you start looking at the refined grains. So your white rice and your white pasta and your white um, flour and bakery goods. So that should give you a really good start on getting your head round leaky gut, where it comes from, what kind of symptoms it produces, what's actually happening in the gut in your immune system and what you can start to do about it to start to remove some of the causative factors and the drivers for it from your lifestyle. I know you're listening to this because you care about your health and that you want to learn more and educate yourself to empower yourself to take control of your health and be as healthy into the future for as long as possible so you've got health and vitality to do all of the stuff that you want to do. This is the first of many, many educational slots that I'm going to do and put out to the Our Tribe Lifestyle Group. And I'm really excited. I'd really like your feedback, more questions, give me more direction on what kind of information I can pass over to you. If it relates to your specific case, you can put it on the forum or just message me off the public forum if you want to do that. Take care. I shall speak to you soon.